gun sales have hit a new record. So the Newtown shooting, which was in December of uh, 2012, for the three months after that, and you can see a big spike in the three months following. And then for some reason, when it gets a little warmer out, I guess no one buys guns uh, in, the, in the middle of the year and towards the summer, and then it goes up again. Um, look. You know, this, the thing with guns, it's like we, something horrible happens, and I think the natural reaction would be to think that maybe people will be less interested in guns when, when a bunch of children are shot. And yet we have now all this proof that that's absolutely not true. What is gun, going on? Gun sales go up because people were afraid Obama was going to take, take away them. their so guns. It's a, so it's the immediate yeah. reaction is a horrible shooting, and then the first thing that the gun people think is, we have to get more guns. Look, there's always going to be reactive people on either side of an issue. So there's reactive people that are like, we need to get rid of all the guns in this country immediately because children got shot, and what about the children? Then you're going to have this complete other reaction, which is going to be like, now they're going to take away all of our guns, so let me just hoard all the guns I can. And usually neither of those extremes are even relevant to what's really happening. I think there's a big propaganda machine put out there by the gun companies and the ammo companies and you know everyone else saying that Obama's gonna take them away so that's why it's dipped a little bit now that I think people realize that Obama has bigger and better things to do than try to like wrestle your guns away from you maybe he wanted more strict background checks but that's about it yeah like, so wait so by the way I should say that the the chart we just showed there was for background checks mm -hmm. so actually the amount of guns that were bought were, were really higher than that because you only need one background check and you could buy five guns so what, what will it take if, because I, I do buy into this reactionary idea, both sides immediately after a tragedy you know, stake their claim, what will it take to get some kind of gun control? Because that was the chance. We had our chance right after that, and Obama couldn't do it. He tried and couldn't do it. Yeah, and, and he still is. Yeah. I mean, that's a very important issue, and I'm sure we'll hear about it in the State of U the Union in three weeks. You've got to remember, the National Rifle Association is driving this mm -hmm. engine, and I gotta hand it to them, they are very effective in their messaging, and they take no prisoners. So I, even after the uh, Newtown, they go, they're out there scaring yep. people into buying guns and ammunition, which is now going up. We have a serious problem in this country, and the political leaders are afraid to tackle it, again, because of the NRA and those allies. They can't even get an assault weapons ban passed, which has mm -hmm. been expired for 10 years. So it's a very sad state, we need, we need to, concentrate on that and we need to take some action. Is part of this also that there's other political things going on that I think make the gun people nervous because they they believe and the NRA believes that one day they're going to have to uprise, you know, yeah. have an uprising against the government. But I don't so necessarily when, not believe that. Either, I, I'm kind of you know? with it too or yeah. zombies or robots or something, something. but that so that the more this NSA type mm -hmm. stuff happens, it creates more uh, suspicion about the government. So it's it's a lot of things at once. Yeah. It's not just about the gun. It's about things that are actually okay. legitimately happening in the government that we're concerned about. Look, here's the thing: if you are a reactionary person in any way, in any area of your life, you are an idiot. <laughs> Seriously, I don't. I mean, that's a strong statement, and people are going to be like, "Why would you say that?" It's true. If you're a reactive person and you hear information that you're not sure where it's coming from and decide to freak out and, and panic bam. immediately, ah, oh my God, yeah. you're an idiot. Yeah. That's it, and that's simple. And I think a lot of people, you know, it's all personal responsibility type stuff. It's all going, okay, what's really going on? Let me find out the real information and let me find out where it's coming from. And the larger problem in this is no one really cares where everything's coming from when we hear this type of information. And like you said, it's the gun lobby. So when we find out how much the gun lobby has paid for all different members of Congress, paid for different people's campaigns, paid for everyone, they can't pass an assault weapons ban. How could you when people are getting so much money when they're putting food on their kids' tables in the government because they're getting money from organizations tied to the NRA? Right, so, and yeah. you know, after, after Newtown, there was something like 90% uh, people wanted an assault weapons ban and they still mm -hmm. couldn't do it. So that just shows you how. Yes, and the NRA is very smart. Politically, they'll go in, and if somebody does vote for an assault weapons ban in their state, they'll recall them. They'll oh, take yeah. them out. So it puts the fear of God into these other politicians. They're very effective. I think we really have to evaluate the NRA and maybe start looking at ways to work with them or to get them to back away or be aggressive against them if we're going to look to have any kind of gun restrictions, gun um, mm -hmm. assault weapon ban in this country. Yeah. Is, is the bigger thing with the shootings, is it really about prescription drugs? This is the thing that nobody will talk about. Oh, with the kids but and the prescription every drugs? every single one of these mass shooters, I, I can't swear it's every single one, a huge percentage, I would venture to say 90% in the last 10 years, they're always on prescription they're, drugs. They're generally also either on antidepressants or yeah. on something for ADD or ADHD, and both of those drugs have been shown in kids to you know, increase incidences of suicide, murderous thoughts, aggressive thoughts, yeah, and all these other things. I mean, just listen to the commercials. Yeah, yeah they, all of those. They things. just, you know, it's fully disclosed in the end that these things could happen to young adults. I think, you know, the pharmaceutical industry 
right now in this country is, and, and by the way, hopefully maybe they'll get better once they realize that they can start funding more and more marijuana things, but and I'm not kidding yeah. when I say that. Yeah. It's an honest thing. Yeah. But you know, the pharmaceutical industry right now has a vested interest in keeping all the children in this country on their drugs, so then they become you know users of more of the drugs when they get older and over and over again. And the fact that almost every single one of these kids involved in a shooting has been on an antidepressant or on some sort of um, you know amphetamine type, Ritalin type thing is a huge problem, and no one wants to talk about it. Yeah, why why won't we? Is it for the same reason that we won't do it? Is it because the NRA and the pharmaceutical guys that their that their lobby is just as powerful, but we just don't hear about them as much, right? It's environmental as well. Mm-hmm. We look at the families, mm-hmm. look at the mother in the new towns situation who was buying her son guns. Yeah. And, um, it's it's a lot, I think, based on the family. I don't think we can just demonize the oh, pharmaceutical yeah. industry and that parents are trying to help their kids. But I know families who are very concerned about their kids because they've got these wild kids and they're not sure what they're going to do. And it's important that we work with the families, mental health experts, and that there is that health care part of Obamacare or something mm-hmm. to, to treat mental health issues in this country. It's not just the mass murders, mm-hmm. but it's so many other crimes against society. Yeah. Sure. So last part on this, which I think is sort of what you're getting to, how much of this is also the media's fault? Because we don't deal with two things at once ever. Mm-hmm. So a shooting happens, we immediately say it's about a shooting or it's about guns, mm-hmm. but when it really could be a combination of all the things we're talking about, that it could be you know, the antidepressants, it could be the over-violenced culture sure. that we have. I don't think it's video games personally. I, that, to me, that's a, a, how you get the aggression right. out. But that it could be a confluence of all these things. But we would storm. never have that debate. Television certainly doesn't mm-hmm. have that debate ever, right? Well, television needs to have sound bites and things now, especially with the internet on there. It's almost that television people are looking for that one viral right. hit. So they have the one sentence that explains perfectly what happened. And <laughs> the whole you damn can't, thing. Yeah. Right, you can't ever examine something as as awful and as as wide as a mass shooting on just like kid was on Ritalin or, you know, bad parents or angry or just a psychopath. Or it's always a perfect storm of things that make something extreme and terrible like that happen. So when you have a kid going and shooting somebody and, and you just don't want to be insensitive to the families and you also have to kind of pander to your audience who needs an answer and wants to feel safe, it's easier just to blame one thing because then your audience feels like, oh, it was just this. And if we just take away guns or if we just take away this one thing, we will never have this again. And as we've seen, it's never just one element. It's, it's a whole bunch of different things. And I will say, I've taken Adderall before. I've had yeah. it prescribed for me. As you can see, I talk really fast and I have that Settle thing down, that Jim, sometimes feels like an ADD type, you know, yeah. personality. And it seriously made me, it's made me feel like the most violent, crazy thoughts I've ever felt in my life. Hmm. Like rip my own skin off. I feel like my tendency more would be like to panic yeah. myself, but I can imagine if my natural tendency was, was toward violence, I would have been violent. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I have no doubt in my mind. Yeah, what Fred, bring the, us home on this. Well, I just think the tragedy too is what is going on in this country. Think of these schools now that in, when I was growing up, we used to have to go under our desk or to fall out shelter. We thought the nuclear bomb was coming from Russia. Now these kids are fearful of, of their fellow yeah. students. They have mm-hmm. lockdown practices. Law enforcement works on this. Security guards at schools. Um, backpack, metal right. detector searches. Which is so normalizing is, it, by the way, a little this bit. This is what's Completely. going on in this country, which is terrible. Kids should not have to go through that. And I think that's one of the great tragedies of these gun violence attacks here.